So let's fix a mistake I made in the last episode, episode 4. So if we go to the create player function and down here where it says speeder body position set. That command works for 3JS but that's not how you set the position in Ganon JS. We should change that to speeder body dot position is equal to a new Canon vec 3 and then O to O inside the brackets. We, there we go. So let's create our ground textures first here. So let's scroll up to the top of our program to the global variables section and we're going to create a new texture loader. So I'm just calling it texture loader and I'm creating a new 3 dot texture loader. This will be used to load our texture images. So let's get our texture images. A safe free place to get free textures is textures.com. In the search bar here I just entered sand and it gave me some PBR materials but I'm just going to use a seamless texture so it won't use so much resources on our device. And if you find one you like just click on it. The images have different sizes and you can click on any ones that are free. And in my code editor I've created a folder called textures and you can just drag and drop that image into that folder. So let's scroll down to our create ground function and below where we added our ground body to our world this is where we're going to add our ground textures. So I'm just going to create some room. So here I created a new ground texture object and I'm using the texture loader to load that image that we just downloaded. Then I'm going to set the wrap S and wrap T properties of that ground texture to three dot repeat wrapping. That means we're going to repeat the texture horizontally and vertically on the ground because the ground is much bigger than the image size. So how many times are we going to repeat that image? We're going to use the repeat.set method to set the number of times the image will repeat. If you want the image to look finer, then I would use a higher number. And if you want the image to look stretched, then I would use a lower number. It just depends what kind of look you want and the size of the image and the size of the ground that you're making. So you're going to have to play with these numbers to get a look that you want. Okay, now I'm just creating a new ground material. I'm using a mesh standard material and I'm setting the color map to that ground texture that we created up here. You can also color that ground texture by adding the color property and it will combine the color values with the color map. Now I'm creating my ground geometry. I'm making a new three box geometry. If you are making the ground shape a box like this and you're putting in the dimensions of that box, these dimensions for the box geometry should be twice as big as these dimensions for the Canon box. If you're using a plane then it doesn't matter. And then I'm just creating a ground mesh by passing in the geometry and material and I'm adding it to the scene. I'm setting the Y to minus one. The reason is if I set it to zero you can see that the speeder kind of sinks in and so does the body into the sand and I don't want that. I want them to sit above it so I'm setting the mesh to a Y of minus one and that fixes that problem. Okay so there's our ground. Now let's create our chase cam. Let's first get rid of the orbit controls because the orbit controls control the camera and the chase cam control the camera. So if we leave them both on, they will both be fighting for control of the camera. So let's scroll down to the animate loop. So here's our animate loop. So let's delete the controls.update in the animate loop. And then let's scroll up to the global variables section. Let's delete let controls. Let's delete the init orbit controls function in the list of setup functions. And let's scroll down to that function init orbit controls, highlight it all, and delete it. Okay, and then let's go to the camera position. In init scene, it says camera.position.set, this line right here, and let's delete that. And you'll see that our camera has moved to the origin, but that's okay, that will change. So let's declare some global variables for our chase cam because they'll be used in different functions. So I'm going let chase cam and chase cam pivot. So in our settings we can control where the chase cam will be. It can be from this position and range all the way to this position. And we'll get into that later. And I'm creating the object view that will be a new 3 vector 3. And inside view we will hold the world position of the chase cam pivot. What we're going to do is group the speeder and the chase cam and the chase cam pivot together and then we're going to measure how much the speeder has translated its position in the world and pass that position into the chase cam pivot with this view. And then in the list of setup functions I'm creating this function init chase cam. So let's scroll down and see what that looks like. 
So here is the function init chase cam right above init light. So I'm creating the chase cam object. That is the middle of the speeder body mesh. And then I'm creating the chase cam pivot object and I'm setting this position kind of above and behind the speeder. Now you can play with these numbers and change them to whatever you want. If you want the chase cam lower, then you can change the Y settings. And if you want it farther back, you can change the Z setting. So think of this as like the offset distance between the speeder and the camera. And then I'm adding the chase cam pivot to the chase cam. So the chase cam pivot will be a child of the chase cam object. What does that mean? It means if the position and the rotation of the chase cam changes, it will affect all its children, including the chase cam pivot. And then I'm adding the chase cam to the world. So let's go down to the create player function. So here's create player and where we created our mesh. Here I've added this line, speeder mesh add chase cam. So the chase cam will be a child of the speeder mesh. So if the speeder mesh changes position and rotation, the chase cam will also change its position and rotation. So now we need to make the camera always look at the speeder mesh. So if we scroll down to the move speeder function, so here's the move speeder function, and here I'm updating this position and rotation of the speeder mesh. I'm adding this line. Now the camera will always look at the speeder mesh position. Okay, now we have to update the camera position all the time. Let's go to the animate loop here and we're going to call a function called update chase cam. And then below the animate loop, we're going to make that function. If I just scroll down here, so function update chase cam. Now I'm getting the world position of the chase cam pivot and putting it in this view. Remember view is a vector three, so it'll hold the X and Y and Z coordinates of the chase cam pivot in this world. I'm just making sure that the Y value of the view is always positive. If you allowed your speeder to back up, the camera will actually flip to make sure it's always following the speeder. And now we can interpolate between the two camera positions, the, the origin of the speeder and the chase camera pivot. We're gonna do that with this lerp vectors method. So I'm taking the camera position and we can change it from the camera position, which is the one in the middle of the speeder. So if I set this to zero, the camera position will be this camera position inside the speeder. And you can see that it's right in the middle of the speeder. So we can range it from that, or we could range it to where the cam chase cam pivot is located, this view position in the world. So the camera can range from here or two here, depending on what number you put here. And that's how the chase cam works. So let's add a material to our ramp and get rid of the Canon debugger so we don't see an outline around our bodies. So let's scroll up to the create ramp function. Here's our create ramp function and we'll just add the material below where we added the ramp body to the world. So you can add any type of material to it. I just added a mesh standard material with a sandy color and then I created a ramp geometry the ramp box geometry has to be twice the dimensions of our ramp shape. So our ramp shape is five by one by 10. My box geometry is double that, 10 by two by 20. And then I just took my material and geometry and made the mesh. Now I'm gonna set the position and rotation of the ramp mesh to the same position and rotation of the ramp body. So I'm just taking the ramp body and copying that into the ramp mesh position and I'm copying the ramp body quaternion and making it the same as the ramp mesh quaternion. And there we go, there's our ramp. So let's get rid of the Canon debugger so we don't see the outline of these bodies. Let's scroll down to the animate function. Here we go, so I'm just gonna comment out Canon debugger update. And there we go. So you see when we, fl you see when we drive off the ramp, the, uh, <laughs> the land speeder really likes to flip and you can control the flip with the arrow keys, but we can change the settings so it doesn't act so flippy. Our mass is really light. It only has a mass of one. And for a, a land speeder machine, that's probably a bit light. So maybe we can make that 100. And to control the flipping, there's two ways. We can control the angular damping. If you set it to one or close to one, that means less flipping and zero means more flipping. So let's just try this. See how much it's way less flippy. And if you don't want any flipping, you can set the fixed rotation property to true. So it keeps it from flipping and then update the mass properties of that speeder body. So if we try this, see it doesn't flip at all. So it really just depends what you want in your project.
In the next episode we'll add a shadow map, sound effects, heads-up display, speedometer, and a reset button.